Yeah, well, thank you for being here. So tell me a little bit about your story. I, I've maybe spent 10, 15 minutes chatting with you, and then I see the reports, and you're just this mega star. You beat everybody out in the entire company. So tell me how you ended up where you are, and we'll go from there. So as far as how I ended up in the mortgage business or how I ended up with Union Home Mortgage? In the mortgage business. In the mortgage business. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom for five years, and I needed a career where I could ha be available to my kids. I had to be able to drop them off school, pick them up from school. And when I first moved to North Carolina from Brooklyn, I got my real estate license at 19 years old and became very good friends with a family, a family owned real estate firm here in uh, North Carolina. And about six months in, I realized that being a realtor was definitely not my calling. Um, I was, did not feel like I was good at it, wasn't cut out for it. So I just kind of walked away from that. And then when it was time for my kids to go into kindergarten, my three boys, I decided that um, I would go back and get my mortgage license because that is what I had wished that I had done instead of getting my real estate license. And so I went ahead and got my license and uh, went back to that family, those friends that I had from back when I was 19. And they were my first friends in North Carolina when I moved here and told them I was in mortgage and they were thrilled. And that's how I got my start. Wow. So With then what? One What's that? With just one, with just one, uh, one realtor is all it started with. Wow. Wow. What was your total closed volume for this year? For this year, it was about 51 million. $51 million. Wow. So what takes you from one realtor to 51 million in closed volume? Uh, well, I've been doing this for about 17 years now, and my, um, my kids are all grown. And in fact, my oldest is one of my production assistants. So in the past 17 years, it is, has really just been word of mouth. That is, that's all it has ever been. I work with the, that one realtor, and then the person on the listing side was impressed. And then you kind of have two and things change and people, realtors come and go because some leave the business and time changes things, but it's always grown from that one realtor and just having different transactions, past clients. It, that's all it has been just doing a good job and being conscientious and caring and knowledgeable and your, the business just grows on its own. Wow. So you've not invested a lot of money in ads or marketing or anything like that to promote your business? Nothing. I have never um, done anything like that. I haven't run any ads. It has been nothing but just doing a really good job. Wow. Are you good at asking for referrals? I, I don't. I, I really don't ask for referrals. Um, I, my goal is to always answer my phone, always be available for my realtors. If they need me, I am available, whether it's the weekend or uh, night, they know they can text me and I will be there. So I, have, I haven't had to really ask for referrals. Now, if I have a new realtor where if I'm working with a past client, and they come with a realtor that's never worked with me, well, I'll make sure that we shine and do a fantastic job. And then when the deal is over, I will say, look forward to our next one. And they'll say, definitely, I'm definitely going to send you more business. So it, I don't really go out and ask, you know, I'll send a quick email that says that it was a great deal. Please send me more. But that's about as far as it goes. Wow. Wow. That's really impressive. You don't hear that very often. So Good for you, like good old fashioned work ethic. <laughs> that, that, you know what? That is, that's all it is. I mean, my whole ethic is, you know, work hard, play hard, pray hard. Those are, those are the, the things we do. We work hard. We work late sometimes. We work weekends. But at the same time, we play hard. You know, we go out, my husband and I go out to dinner or drinks or whatever, at least one night during the week. And then definitely one night on the weekend. And then on Sunday, I cook a big meal for the family. So we really work 
very hard and we work very late and we work a lot of hours, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we have a really good time and we, we do spend time having a great time. You do. So you bring the enjoyment into the long hours. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And especially if it's been a long day and it's been a rough day, that'll probably be the night that we go out during the week. <laughs> so you have to, you've got to decompress. You've right. got to turn it off and, and start anew the next day. Um, and I, I really believe in everything that I do is helping somebody else yeah. get into a house or get out of a house or get a lower payment. These things are important and I take it extremely seriously. So when I'm working, I am working, I am focused, I'm organized. And then when it comes time to turn it off, you've got to turn it off so you can be refreshed for the next day. So focused and organized. Tell me, how do you remain organized? What does organized look like to you? Um, I'm pretty much OCD. So I have everything very structured. Uh, my calendar is structured. My, my routine is structured. I send the same type of email every time I get a contract, the same type of email when I'm getting ready to lock the rate. Everything I do is very structured. Um, I constantly go over my pipeline to see what I'm missing, what I need, go through send reminder emails. I'm really big on email and it help, helps me to stay organized because I can look back through the emails and remind myself what was our last conversation? Oh, good. So you have a team, right? I know you said your son is your one of your production assistants. That's pretty yes. cool. How yep. many people on your team? Uh, myself, my son, and my husband. My husband is my other production assistant. <laughs> I love it. I love yep. it. Yep. So you must get yep. asked the question I always get asked. How do you work with your husband every day? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, we're best friends, you know, we, we hang out together, we work together, we enjoy each other. So it's not difficult at all. He's extremely supportive. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times we've been on the way to the beach and I'll have to take an application and he won't get upset. He'll hand me the pen and the paper and make it easier for me to go ahead and take it. He's understanding. Yeah. Um, he knows what, what I have to do and, and why we do it. So it's really great to have that support. Yeah, that's true. And then also having your son in that dynamic. That's, that's got to be wonderful it, too. It, it really is. Um, New Year's Day, he was sitting, putting in ticket. I took a couple applications and they were going to look at houses. So New Year's Day, he was sitting there putting in the applications for me. Um, I know I, I'm lucky because I have such a good team that will work even when they're, even when they're not working. Right. And um, I think that, that definitely contributes to my success. Yeah, for sure. I, I always feel that way too. When people ask me, how do you work with your husband? And it's like, well, one, we don't sit there and work on everything together. We kind of divide Correct. and conquer, but it's so fun when we go out or at home because we both can understand the other what they went through that day and we could talk it through it in a really deep level whereas if he wasn't yes. in the industry i always felt like i don't know if he'd get it so the fact that he exactly. handed the pen and the paper he's getting it so that's cool he's, it, it is and that that's exactly right he understands when i say you know i don't have to say oh it was a rough day he knows you know yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> he knows, knows without you saying <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Or if it's been a great day, he's there to share in the success and the happiness. Um, so it's, it's really very wonderful. Yeah, that's cool. So tell me about taking care of you. That's a lot of volume, a lot of hours, a lot of family time. What do you do to take care of you? Um, you know, I really enjoy the family time. That, that's, that's absolutely my joy. When, when, it, when I've got, we've got three boys. So when they're here and the friends and the girlfriends and everything else, that is absolutely my joy. I do, of course, we love to go out also. And, you know, when you go out, you see friends and you see people, you know, and reconnect with people that you just run into. So I really enjoy going out, um, spending time out and also being with the family. That's really what I do for me. And we'll usually take a weekend trip to the beach, maybe once a month. 
leave on a Friday afternoon, come home on Sunday. And that is, that's my place. That's my happiness is at the beach. Nice. Yeah, I would agree. That's a lot of people's happiness is the beach. <laughs> but what about like your health and your exercise and all that stuff? Are you... Oh. We do. Yeah. My husband and I go to the gym a um, couple of times a week. Sometimes we try and go a couple of times a week. So, you know, at the end of the day, we'll go and spend an hour at the gym or whatever, take a walk in, in, in the neighborhood. But yeah, that, that is absolutely something we do. Okay, good. What about, you seem like a very positive person. Is that pretty natural for you that you are very optimistic or do you, are you intentionally working at that? Um, no, I'm just naturally optimistic. I'm probably overly optimistic and probably sometimes need to find reality. Uh, <laughs> I, I just see the good in everything. And yeah. even when things go bad, my faith is so strong that I know it happened for a reason. It, it doesn't even get me upset because I know that there is a reason that that deal fell through at the last minute because it was a bad home inspection because that family wasn't supposed to be in that house. Mm -hmm. So I, I am just naturally optimistic. I don't even, I don't even try. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And your faith is strong. Have you always had strong faith? Did you grow up in the church or did you develop yes. that? Yes. No, I, I grew up, I went to Catholic school all my life. And um, so it's just, faith is just something that's been a part of my life. And you're in North Carolina, right? Yes, I am. Have you always been in North Carolina? No, I moved uh, to North Carolina when I was 19 years old. I moved from Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I don't really detect a strong North Carolina accent. Yeah, yeah. I had to lose the Brooklyn accent so people in the South could understand me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. So what would you say are your top five things? I mean, talking to you, I can already see just beautiful family, your optimism, your organization. What would you say are your top five things that have led you to success? I think my drive, you know, I want it. That, that's, that's probably the biggest part of it. Um, I care about people and I, I don't want to disappoint anyone, whether it's the realtor or the borrower or the seller for that matter that I don't even know. Um, I really don't like to disappoint. I like to see people be happy. I like to help people. And um, that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much it. I am very driven. I'm slightly competitive. So uh, I think these are the things that have made me where I am today. Oh, those are great characteristics to have. So tell me a little bit what led you to Union Home. Um, I, you know, I started off at working at a brokerage uh, and I was a broker and I worked for a family owned company and I loved that family. And then I was offered a position with a bank and they were a small community bank and I absolutely loved the CEO and founder. It's just a good, good bank. Well, the bank got bought out and um, I did not care for management at all. They just didn't seem to have their heart and mortgage. Um, I didn't, couldn't see where their heart was actually. So six, within six months, we all knew, I knew it was time to leave. And um, my friend, Michelle Roten, found Union Home Mortgage and told me that we really needed to check it out. Uh, so on her advice, we all did that and we checked it out and we had a round table with um, Mike and Brian and Jill and Brian and Jim and, um, and all of us. And we were so impressed that I was sold right then and there. Wow. And how long is that? How long has it been? Uh, it was February of 2018. So it's going on two years now. Wow. First year President's Club, second year number one in the company. Very exciting. It's so exciting. And, and one of the things that I absolutely adore is um, they have a slogan that says, have fun, but get it done on time. Yeah. And that's the way I live my whole, my whole world is, you know, we have fun and we're not going to cancel a night out to dinner, even if it means that I have to work until 10 o'clock at night 
the night before. Like if I know I want to go out, I'm going to make sure I get it done, yeah. but we're still going to have fun. And, and that's the motto of the company. And, and it's, it's beautiful. Yep. Yep. I agree. But 51 million, that had to be intentional. That had to be somewhat intentional. Did you set a goal? I mean, it couldn't have just happened, right? I think it wasn't a, it wasn't a $51 million goal. It was a monthly goal. My, my goals are, are always monthly. I don't try and look too far into the future because that's how you can become overwhelmed. Yeah. So my goals are weekly and they're monthly. And, you know, right now it's January. I'm looking into February. That's my focus right now, February. And, and that's the way I say I'm not looking at 2020 as a whole. I just like to keep every month going in the direction I want it to go. And, and, that, and that 51 just happened, but it was just all part of a monthly goal that accumulated. Wow. That's, that's great advice. I, I try and break it down quarterly, but I like the idea of monthly because it does seem more manageable and obtainable. And then before you know it, you've made all these big steps where sometimes I think if you focus too much on the annual, you think you have all this time to do it. And then you get exactly. behind. Mm -hmm. And you have no time. You know, right. if you mess up on one month, that's going to be a huge setback. So if yeah. you see that your month, your, your next month isn't going the way you want it to go, you got to really start working a little harder, a little longer or something. Um, but I can't look at it quarterly. I've got to just take my little chunks at a time, focus on what's right in front of me. So I don't lose sight of what I'm doing. Yep. I love that. Um, you talked about your calendar being really structured. What's your calendar look like? Do you plan out every hour? Do you have a flex time? Tell me a little bit about what your calendar looks like. It always is such a challenge for everyone is Managing the time. Yeah. yeah, I no, I don't I don't plan it by the hour um, at all. It's it's just my calendar has my closing and where I am on each particular closing. Um, so I know whether the CD has gone out or the CD has been signed or the appraisal's been ordered, the appraisal's back. My calendar is nothing but my closings. My day is pretty much talking on the phone, taking applications and answering emails. That's, that's my day from when I start until when I finish. And there's really nothing else that comes in between. Okay, good. So you delegate all the other stuff. Everything else is delegated. Exactly. Perfect. What, did it take a little while to get to that point? Or are you just pretty good at delegating? <laughs> well, I give everybody, every, I know everybody knows their role and, mm -hmm. and they do it. And, you know, when I'm taking an application, you know, Rob, my son, he knows that he's going to come and grab that application and run with it. So nice. I don't have to ask him. I don't have to, I don't really have to ask anybody to do anything. You know, my husband knows what he has to do. He's got the marketing piece of it taken care of. He knows, you know, he's got to get this to the realtor or that to the realtor or pick this up or pick that up. So it's not really a whole lot of delegating. Everybody knows their role and everybody does it. Perfect. Wow. That's a real well-oiled machine. Well, I appreciate you taking your time. I know your calendar is full and I wish you much success for 2020 and start out strong in January. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tracy. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Bye. Bye.